Today's video is how to find pieces like this and turn them into this. Stick around, you don't wanna miss it. All right, today's video is part of the $100 challenge on YouTube. I have stepped in for a fellow furniture flipping friend to be the host, so it's hosted by me. And the rules are simple. First, to announce the host, to keep all your products, including your piece and hand tools under $100, that does not include power tools, and at the end, tally up what you spent to see if you got under that $100, and as a side note, tax will not be included in that breakdown because it varies so much from state to state, let alone country to country. So let's see if I can do it. Now this video is also part one of a mini series I'm doing on the channel that is a beginner's guide to flipping furniture. Now in each video, I will have a furniture flip from beginning to end, but along the way, there are going to be key pointers and tips to help those wanting to get started in flipping furniture. So with this video being part one of the mini series, we are going to go back to the very beginning and answer that question of where do you even find furniture to flip? Big trash day. That is a great way to find free pieces of furniture on this side of the road. Lord knows I have picked up many, many pieces this way to flip. And if you're lucky like me in my area, I have a schedule and a map of where big trash is so I know exactly where to look. Next up is garage sales and estate sales. How do I know where local ones are to me? You can look up websites like garagesalefinder.com or I know the local estate sale companies and I just look at their website and I'm on their email list as well. So I get emails when they are upcoming estate sales. Now estate sales are notorious for having high prices, but usually on the last day of the estate sale is 50% off. Occasionally you will find an estate sale that is being ran by the family and those usually have much more reasonable prices. I have bought many pieces from estate sale and flipped and made a nice profit. Thrift stores are also a really good way to find cheap and discounted furniture. I think the two most popular thrift stores are Goodwill and Salvation Army. And if you visit your local ones enough, you'll be able to figure out their schedule and know what days they're putting out new items. Also, don't forget to check out the small individual thrift stores in your area. They usually have very beautiful and unique furniture. Online sales is another great way to find pieces to flip. There are online auctions, some estate sales are online, and then there's always the selling platforms like Cherish, Let Go, Offer Up, Craigslist, and then my personal favorite, Facebook Marketplace. I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace the other day and found this entry table that had been marked down to only $15 and I went ahead and clicked on the item and went through the photos. It did picture the damage but for $15 and the location is close to me, I decided to go ahead and message the person and see if it was still available and it was so I got this piece for only $15. After getting the piece of furniture home, I went ahead and unloaded it and decided to give the piece a good look over. You can see that the front leg on the left side is intact still. There is failing finish all over the entire piece and the right front leg is busted so that will have to be fixed. Also, I think this piece was up against the wall at one point because there is chunks stuck to it. And on the inside of the drawer, someone has written, somebody loves Jen, that's for sure. And then I noticed the brand name, American of Martinsville. This is good quality furniture. That is a known name brand. And if you're new to flipping furniture, go ahead and do research if you find a name brand and check to see 
if the furniture piece that you are working on actually can get you more value or more money if it is restored. Now the piece I have has a big chunk missing out of it. I cannot restore it back to its original state. So I am going to go ahead and paint this piece. Spoiler alert. All right, I start this piece like I do most of them by removing the hardware and giving this piece a thorough cleaning. Now the goal here is to try to flip this piece under $100 that includes the piece, the supplies, and all hand tools. Power tools are not included in that $100. I have been flipping furniture for about nine years. So over that time period, I have accrued a lot of tools. So we're trying to take this very back, back to the very basics to keep it under the $100 was actually quite a bit of a challenge for me, which I was surprised by that. But of course, you'll have to wait to the end to see whether I was able to do it or not. After a thorough cleaning, come back with some warm water to give it a nice rinse to remove any remaining soap residue. After that, I let the surface air dry and then I listened to the cicadas sing the song of summer in Oklahoma. Okay, let's fix this broken front leg by making a mold off the other front leg that is still intact. And I do that by my hot glue trick that I've done a couple times on the channel. It's just so much cheaper to make a mold this way than buying those mold kits off Amazon. The process is really simple. You're going to add a thick layer of hot glue. Make sure that your mold expands over the damaged area that you want to repair and then let it cool and then peel it off. And then see, we have a nice mold custom to our piece of the furniture. Next, you want to fill the mold with Bondo. This is a two-part epoxy. And the chunk that's missing isn't very big, so I don't get a whole lot of Bondo out of the can. And then you mix it with the red part, that's the hardener. Mix it together and use a putty knife to put the Bondo into the mold. Next, I line up the mold and put it into place and then use some regular painter's tape to tape it into place and I let that set overnight. The next morning, I remove the tape and mold to this perfect looking mold. <laughs> okay, it actually kind of looks like crap, but don't worry, we will sand it a little bit here into shape. And I use some 120 grit sandpaper here and just sand it by hand, occasionally looking over at the other leg and make the shape match. It took me about 20 minutes to do this part, but you can see it looks so much better now. Perfection. Next, I use my Surf Prep Sander and some 120 grit sandpaper to scuff sand the entire surface. Now, usually when you scuff sand, you get like a powdery, white powder looking substance. You can see that I, I'm not getting it here and that is because the top of this is laminate, so it doesn't really show markings. It's done on a very microscopic level. Now, for the curvy detailed areas, I use one of the foam abrasive pads from Surf Prep to make sure I got the scuff sand for primer as well. There were a few small areas that I did go ahead and sand by hand using that 120 grit piece of sandpaper. After all the sanding is done, I grab a damp lint-free cloth and wipe away the dust residue.
Now since the top of this piece is laminate, I am using Dixie Belle's Slick Stick. It is an adhesion primer and it's great for surfaces like laminate. You want to have a damp brush. I'm misting my brush with my spray water bottle and getting a little bit of the primer on my brush. I do my first coat of primer with the piece upside down to make sure all the surfaces get hit with that primer. And then I flip it over and do a second coat of primer. And and I let both of the coats of primer sit overnight. The next morning, I grabbed my 220 grit sanding sponge. I love sanding with these. They're on Amazon. I'll make sure to put the link in the description. And then after lightly sanding the surface, I came back with a lint-free cloth and wiped away the dust residue. To help cut down on cost, I found this paint on the mist tint section at Home Depot and I'm going to make my own chalk paint using BB Frosh. I've used this once before on my channel. Chalk paint is expensive, especially when you're trying to keep your cost way down like for this challenge. Even the bare chalk paint that I normally use on my channel can add up. So. I'm making my own. You mix, it tells you the measurements on the side of the canister for the BB Frost. You put the powder in first, then the water, and then it tells you the amount of paint to add and just stir everything together thoroughly. Now I'm using this BB Frost like any regular chalk paint. I mist the surface down and then do a thin layer of paint. You can see the white primer through my paint in the strokes and that is okay. You want that for your first coat of paint. You That way you know that it is thin enough. Once I get the paint in a section, I go back in long swipe. So if there is any visible brush strokes, they at least go the same direction. I end up doing three coats of the paint, allowing two hours to dry in between each coat of paint. In between layers of paint, I work on the handles. I wash them first with just a tiny drop of Dawn Just Soap and then rinse them off thoroughly. Once they were dry, I used Dixie Belle's Gold Gilding Wax to update them. This is a way a cost-effective way to use very little product to update your hardware. That little can will last me for at least a year and I'll be able to do multiple pieces. I let the paint and the gilding wax dry overnight. The next day I used a fine grade, so this is 800 grit sanding sponge to lightly go over the surface and then wipe the dust away with a lint-free cloth. For top coat, I am using Varathane's polyurethane in the water-based formula. I like the satin finish. And I'm gonna apply it with a top coat sponge. I'm using my water bottle to lightly mist the sponge and then dip my sponge into the top coat and then spread it around. I do three layers of the top coat, allowing it to dry two hours in between each coat. Now I did not add the sponge into my cost of supplies because this is a step that you can use using that same paintbrush that you painted the piece with. Also, this was given to me for free from a friend, so from a friend, so the sponge did not cost me anything at all. 
Typically, when I use a sponge to apply my top coat, I like to put it in a pair of pantyhose. This keeps the sponge from absorbing too much top coat and also helps reduce the visibility of streaks. I didn't have any pantyhose in stock though, so I just used the sponge. All right, I'm leaving the I Love Jen. It will forever be in the bottom of that drawer. But you know, not everybody is in love with Jen. So I'm covering it up with some peel and stick wallpaper from Amazon. I love this white and gold geometric shape. You peel the backing off, put it into place, and then I use a razor blade to go around the edges to cut the excess off and then peel it off and then the drawer is ready to go. The only last step I have to do is to add the hardware back on. All right, before the final reveal, let's go over the tally. The left column is the prices for if you did not own anything. I'm coming in at a $201.67 if you didn't own any of these products and you had to buy them, and that doesn't even include the sander that I used. Now the right column is the total that I spent on the amount of product that I used to flip this piece. So I am set up to get a pretty nice profit off of this piece. However, the challenge was for the left column to be under $100. So womp womp, I was a big fat fail on this challenge. I still try though. And we're gonna get to the final reveal because you know what, it was worth it. All right, here is a quick reminder of what we started with. The failing finish in that love stricken drawer. And here is our after. This piece turned out so boho. It is so chic. The mist tint color is not a color that I would normally go for, but I'm so glad that I did. I went out of my comfort zone and all everything just came together and I just absolutely love how this piece turned out. And on a side note, I posted this on my personal Facebook page and it sold to a friend within an hour of it being posted. So I think win-win in the end, even though I lost the challenge. That is all I have for you guys today. Until next time.